This is the number one mistake that people make when they use a Lego gyro sensor. And if you are building a robot with a gyro sensor right now, you're probably making this mistake too. It doesn't matter whether it is the EV3 gyro sensor, Robot Inventor, or some other third party sensor for Mindstorms. Making this mistake is going to prevent you from truly understanding how a gyro sensor works and how to extract the very most performance out of using the gyro sensor. So are you ready to learn what this mistake is, how to stop doing it, and how to get the most out of your gyro sensor? Well, stick around. What is up everyone? My name is Kyle and you are watching BuilderDude35. If you're new to this channel, when I'm not shouting at you about things you're doing wrong on your robot, I make tutorials about Lego Mindstorms. And today's video is about everyone's favorite topic yet again, the gyro sensor. It seems like there's no end of things to talk about when we're talking about a sensor this complicated and frankly controversial. Today, you're tuning into the gyro sensor sensei himself because you want to learn what is this egregious mistake that everyone has been making and how do I stop making this mistake? Because I love being so frustratingly mysterious in all of my videos, I'm going to start off this video with a question for all of you at home and I actually want you to think about it. So my question to you is, what does a gyro sensor measure? And I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. If you said the gyro sensor measures angle, congratulations, you're just like everybody else. And you're wrong. What? Misunderstanding what a gyro sensor is actually used for and how it works is the most common mistake that people make when they use a gyro sensor, especially if they're just starting out. This really common misconception about how a gyro sensor actually works is holding you back from preventing errors that decrease the gyro sensor's accuracy and stopping you from getting the very most performance out of using this sensor. Okay, wise guy, we get it. Now tell us what the gyro sensor actually measures. The actual measurement that the gyro sensor makes is angular rate of rotation. In non-fancy words, that basically means the gyro sensor measures how fast it's rotating along one of its axes. If it's the EV3 gyro sensor, it has one of these axes. If it's the Robot Inventor gyro sensor, it actually has three axes. But the concept is still the same. The gyro sensor is basically looking to see how quickly it's rotating. And that's the actual measurement the gyro sensor makes. There's no way for a robot to make a direct measurement of its angle heading without using something like like a compass sensor which senses the Earth's magnetic fields to get a heading, but even those are not super accurate. And if you're interested, I can make a follow-up video on how compass sensors work and how they can go wrong. But the most convenient output of a gyro sensor is that angle heading value that it gives us. And that's what we use when we make a drive straight program or a two-wheel Segway balancing robot, which is what I talked about in last week's video if you were there. And if you weren't there, go check out that video. So how does a gyro sensor get us from measuring angular rate of rotation to give us that heading value that we like to use? Well, if you know anything about calculus, you know that whenever you have a rate or a velocity, you can apply a method called integration and that will give you a position. In this case, we're taking the angular rate of rotation, applying integration, and that gives us heading, which is a type of angular position. Integration is a slightly scary math word that you'll encounter in college, and if you're lucky, that will be the scariest math you'll ever have to deal with, and you won't be like me and take discrete math and fail the first exam. But that's the crucial thing to understand about a gyro sensor. The actual measurement it's making is angular rate of rotation. Then it applies a whole bunch of math to that measurement to give us the heading value or the angle value out, which is the thing we really care about using in our programs. Now that you understand this important distinction about how a gyro sensor actually works, we can apply this knowledge in the context of how the gyro sensor goes wrong and give you some best practices for using this sensor that'll help you get the most performance out of it. So you may or may not already know this, but when you first turn on a gyro sensor, it is absolutely crucial that you leave the sensor as still as possible for the first few seconds. 
because the gyro sensor is performing a calibration during this time. One part of the calibration is looking at temperature because believe it or not, temperature affects the microelectronics that make a gyro sensor work. But more importantly, the gyro sensor is measuring and calibrating out any external accelerations that might be being applied to the robot. Believe it or not, even though a robot might be standing completely stationary, it is constantly accelerating, which is kind of a mind-blowing thing to think about at first. But you have to remember that we are on a very large piece of rock called a planet, the Earth, and the Earth rotates around its axis and it revolves around the sun. For this reason, the Earth is called a non-inertial reference frame, and that is because the Earth is constantly accelerating. Remember that an acceleration is any change in velocity, and that includes changes in direction. So something moving around in a circle is constantly accelerating because it's always changing direction, even if its speed is the same. And as crazy as it may seem to think about this, your gyro sensor does measure the acceleration due to the Earth's rotation and revolution around the sun. And that's why a gyro sensor needs to calibrate when it first turns on. So if you are moving the robot during this calibration in any way, if you just punch the robot or you're spinning it on a turntable, you're going to miscalibrate your gyro sensor. It's going to have an incorrect baseline for how much acceleration it needs to figure out. And it assumes that additional acceleration that you just added is part of the acceleration it needs to filter out and any measurement your gyro sensor makes after that is going to be completely bogus and you can't use it. And this is all because of what we said before that the gyro sensor actually measures angular rate of rotation and the Earth's rotation will get measured as part of what the gyro sensor actually measures and that's why it needs to filter it out. If you have any real world or practical experience with using one of these sensors in an actual robot, you'll know that the most obnoxious, most significant significant source of error that you have to battle when using a gyro sensor is drift. And no, I'm not talking about Tokyo Drift. When gyro drift happens, it looks like a small error at first, but you'll notice over time that the gyro sensor's angle starts spiraling out of control. The error starts getting larger and larger as time goes on until eventually your sensor becomes useless and you can't use that angle measurement effectively anymore. So remember what I said before about how a gyro sensor measures angular rate and applies integration to get your angular heading. It turns out that if the gyro sensor even makes a small error in measuring one of those rates, that small error is going to get amplified through the course of your integration over time. And eventually what happens is that small error stacks up over and over and over again over time. And that's where drift comes from. Because now you have a small error that was amplified through the integration, stacked up a whole bunch over time, and it's going to spiral out of control if you don't properly recalibrate your gyro. The first way to prevent gyro drift from happening is to make sure your gyro sensor is properly calibrated. And that's something I talked about earlier in the video. However, there are other things you can look out for when using the gyro sensor that will prevent the likelihood for, of drift from happening. So first, you have to realize that because gyro sensors measure Measure that angular rate of rotation, there's a maximum rate that most gyro sensors can measure, and some of them aren't actually very high. So if your robot is rotating very fast when it's making a turn, it might happen the robot is rotating faster than the highest rate your gyro can measure. And so what that means is even though your robot is, is rotating faster, the gyro is reporting that rate as whatever the highest it can. And that's going to go into the integration with an error, and now you're going to have gyro drift accumulating. Another possible error is if your robot is not turning very smoothly, so if it has sudden changes in the way it rotates while it's turning, uh, those are going to cause errors in the sensor's integration as well, ultimately leading to gyro drift. You will also have to consider your sensor's resolution, which is how fine of a difference in the robot's rotation can it actually measure. And this goes back to what I was saying before, that if you have any sudden changes in the way the robot rotates, those might not get picked up 100% accurately by your gyro sensor, and those errors are going to stack up in the integration. 
So all of these reasons are why I recommend anytime you're using a gyro sensor to measure your robot's turns, that you turn your robot slowly. Don't do it at full power because you're inviting more possibilities for errors to crop up in the integration and ultimately you're going to get gyro drift. So always make your turns slow and safely. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you learned something new, please go right ahead and subscribe to my channel because I make new videos like this all the time and you're not going to want to miss them. And while you're here, leave a comment in the comment section below telling me what you've used the gyro sensor for. I'm always interested in learning about your projects. Anyway, I hope to see you in the next video later and I'll see you soon. Yeah.